Good morning, everyone, from Ford City, Pennsylvania. This is Chuck King on Monday, April 19th, 2021, bringing you the Deuteronomy study, and we're in chapter 15 this morning. Deuteronomy 15 and verse number 1. At the end of every seven years, you shall grant a remission of debts. This is the manner of remission. Every creditor shall release what he has loaned to his neighbor. He shall not exact it of his neighbor and his brother, because the Lord's remission has been proclaimed. So now we're talking about the law of God of releasing the debts every seven years. So at the end of every seven years in Israel, people's debts would be forgiven. What they haven't paid back on loans would be forgiven. And uh, the Lord has established that to keep people from being, you know, uh, inundated by debt in that nation. And, you know, we probably need something here in America because people are deep in debt and can't get out. Verse number three, from a foreigner you may exact it, but your hand shall release whatever of yours is with your brother. So foreigners were different. They could they could hold them to to repaying their debt, but every seven years they would release their fellow Israelites. Verse four. However, there will be no poor among you, since the Lord will surely bless you. In the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess. So that's an amazing statement. The Lord said, if you do what I tell you, there will be no poor among you. Because the Lord will bless you so much in the land of Canaan that there will be an abundant supply for everyone. Verse 5, if only you listen obediently to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandment, which I am commanding you today. So it's conditional. The fact that there would be an abundance in the land is based on their obedience. We keep hammering on this. God always expects his people to obey his word. There's no room for excuses or disobedience. And the blessings of the Lord are determined by the level of obedience that we walk in. Verse 6, For the Lord your God will bless you as he has promised you, and you will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow, and you will rule over many nations, but they will not rule over you. So the, the promise of the Lord, based upon their response of obedience, is to bless them exactly the way he said he would, and they would end up being so prosperous that they would lend to many nations, but they wouldn't need to borrow. They would rule over many nations, but no one would rule over them. That was the promise of God to Israel based on their obedience. Verse 7, If there is a poor man with you, one of your brothers in any of your towns in your land, which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not harden your heart nor close your hand from the poor brother. So he, there shouldn't be any poor people because of the abundance, but if there are poor people, one one of the Israelite brothers, anywhere in Israel, the word says, don't harden your heart or close your hand from this brother. In other words, you've got to help him. Verse 8, but you shall freely open your hand to him and shall generously lend him sufficient for his need in whatever he lacks. So the idea of helping the poor was not giving them a handout, but was loaning them money or supplies, whatever they needed 
that they would eventually pay back. So the, your free and open hand means that you are willing to lend. Notice that word lend. It doesn't say give. It says lend them the money. Verse 9. Beware that there is no base thought in your heart saying, The seventh year, the year of remission, is near, and your eye is hostile toward your poor brother, and you give him nothing. Then he may cry to the Lord against you, and it will be a sin to you. Now let's look at this. You can't do the math and figure out that the seventh day is near. That's the year when they would forgive all the debts. And you can't say, well, I can't help this brother because we're too close to the year of the forgiving of debts. So I'm not going to do that. And the Bible says that that would be sinful for the Israelites not to help their poor brother in need, even if it's near the year of forgiveness of the debts. Because the Lord hears the cry of the poor. I want you to know that. Scripture says it over and over again. The Lord hears the cries of the poor, their prayers. Verse 10, you shall generously give to him, and your heart shall not be grieved when you give to him. Because for this thing the Lord your God will bless you, in all your work and in all your undertakings. So we see how important it is to help the poor. If we help the poor, this is the word to the Israelites, but certainly the principle is the same. God loves the cheerful giver. It's, giver. it's more blessed to give than to receive. These are God's standards. And God says that he will bless Everything we do, all of our work and all of our undertakings, if you are generous toward the poor, even nearing the year of forgiveness of the debts, you shall generously give to him, and your heart should not be grieved. So it be, should be cheerful giving. That's the standard. Cheerful giving to the poor. And here, we know that it, it wasn't just a handout. It was, it was a hand up, you might say, to lift them out of their poverty by loaning them what they would need so they could recover and support themselves. The Bible never supports the welfare mentality that we have developed in the United States and even in missions where people are constantly looking to the missionary for a handout. We should be helping them, yes, especially in emergencies, but the goal should be not to make them dependent on us, but to give them an opportunity to empower them to earn money for themselves. And that's what the principle is here. Verse 11, For the poor will never cease to be in the land. Therefore I command you, saying, you shall freely open your hand to your brother, to your needy and poor in your land. So earlier, the Lord said, verse 4, there'd be no poor because of the blessings of God. But now he's saying there will always be poor. That seems like a contradiction, but it isn't. Because the Israelites were not fully faithful to obey him. And there were, there were results of that which would end up causing their to, them to have some poor people among them. And so the Lord's setting up this, this statute, this, this law, that they would have an open hand and give freely to those in the need among them. And I remember the distinction was, you know, the foreigners, you could require payment back. And uh, but, but your own brethren, those poor among you, you should help them. Verse 12, if your kinsman, a Hebrew man or woman, is sold to you then, you, then he shall serve you six years. But in the seventh year, you shall set him free. 
So even even in the case of 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 someone uh, being hired out or sold as a slave, someone from Israel, a brother, a Hebrew, is is so desperate that they are sold into slavery, they could only be held as a slave for six years. So the seventh year would also be a year of release of any slaves. Verse 13, when you set him free, you shall not send him away empty-handed because he's been, you know, under your control and you've been feeding him and taking care of him as your slave. Now, when you set him free after six years, you can't send him away with nothing. You shall furnish him liberally from your flock and from your threshing floor and from your wine vat. You shall give to him as the Lord your God has blessed you. So you had to send out the slave who had finished their six-year uh, you know, time of, of slavery, you had to send them out with enough support to get started on their own. That's what it amounts to. Verse 15, you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. Therefore, I command you this today always referring to that time of slavery that they should remember and that God had redeemed them from that slavery. So we need to treat one another this way. Even if, if they end up in slavery for six years, we should send them out with enough to get them started on their own. Verse 16, it shall come about if he says to you, I will not go out from you, meaning the slave. He doesn't want to leave. He doesn't want to go out with the provision to get started on his own. And why? Because he loves you and your household since he fares well with you. So the, this, is, this is not an abused slave, but it's more like a hired servant. You know, uh, someone that's giving themselves over because they can't afford to live on their own. And that was common in those times. And in this case, the slave says, you know, I really love this family and I want to stay. Here's what they would have to do. Verse 17, then you shall take an awl. You know what an awl is? It's one of those pointed things that you would hammer, uh, get, hammer it and pierce it through his ear into the door and he shall be your servant forever. Also, you shall do likewise to your maidservant. So if a, a servant or a maidservant wanted to stay with the family and refused to be released, they could become a servant for life. This is the concept of the bond servant. When we see the apostles calling themselves bond servants, they are using this analogy of the servant who refused to be released, but loved the family so much that they wanted to serve for life. And so they voluntarily gave up their option to be freed with supplies to start on their own, and they remain in that house forever. That's the concept of the bond servant that the apostles used to describe their ministry. Servants of the Lord for life, voluntarily, not to do your own thing. So this, this is, it's a beautiful picture of the servant, man or woman who wanted to stay with the family. They would stand against the door doorway and they would have their ear pierced obviously with a, a earring of some sort to mark them that they are servants bond servants for life to this family verse 18 it shall not seem hard to you when you set him free for he has given you six years with double the service of a hired man so the lord your god will bless you in whatever you do so don't be upset you have to set them free after six years because 
They have earned, more than earned their way and blessed you with their service. Verse 19, you shall consecrate to the Lord your God all the firstborn males that are born of your herd and of your flock. You shall not work with the firstborn of your herd nor shear the firstborn of your flock. So they had to dedicate those animals to, uh, to sacrifice for the Lord. They couldn't keep them. You and your household shall eat it, verse 20, every year before the Lord your God in the place where the Lord chooses. So now you see when they would go to the annual festivals and were in the last chapter we saw they were commanded to take uh, their, you know, their tithe, a tithe, and uh, go and sacrifice and then eat the animals celebrating with their family in which would eventually be Jerusalem. That's what it's referring to here. So they would sacrifice the firstborn animals and and eat them in the presence of the Lord. But if any ha if if but if it has any defect such as lameness or blindness or any serious defect, you shall not sacrifice it to the Lord your God. The Lord refused animal sacrifice from from lame or blind or defective animals. They had to sacrifice the healthy ones, the perfect ones. Verse 22, you shall eat it within your gates, the unclean and the clean may eat it as a gazelle or a deer, only you shall not eat its blood. You are to pour it out on the ground like water. Another reference to refusing to eat blood, the life blood of the animal was to be poured out. So these animals that we're talking about, the, these consecrated animals, the firstborn, were to be used in this way to be eaten as a uh, celebration of the family be, uh, in the place where the Lord would choose. So we have this chapter 15 giving us uh, insight into the, the release of debt every seven years, the release of slaves uh, in the seventh year. Uh, actually, at the end of seven years, there would be remission of debt. And the slaves would serve for six years and then be released in the seventh. That's the distinction. And the, this, whole, this whole teaching about how you help the poor and you can't withhold from them. You, you can't have a bad attitude. It all fits in with the, the generous giving of the New Testament, that God loves a cheerful giver, and the willingness to, to help the poor that the New Testament teaches, and how uh, this should be done in Israel. And this standard certainly is also taught in the New, this generous giving to the poor, and to help the poor, not to turn against them, but to be open-handed and cheerfully support the poor. And then we finished up with the bond servant teaching of those servants that didn't want to be free after six years, and also not to be upset when you have to let them free, but certainly set them free. They've given you six years of hard work and has, has been a benefit to you. And finally, the, the giving of the, the firstborn animals to the Lord in sacrifice to enjoy them with your family during those times of Jewish celebrations. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we're learning that the Old Testament is a type and a shadow of the new, that the very things that you taught the Israelites we see fulfilled in Jesus Christ in the new covenant. And yet we see the principles in the Old Testament still being applied in the teaching of the apostles and the prophets and our Lord Jesus Christ. Give us discernment to know how to apply your word and your wisdom 
in our lives that we might glorify you. And even as we serve the poor, according to your word, everything will be blessed in our lives. We thank you for this revelation. May your will be done among us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so that's chapter 15. We'll, we'll move on tomorrow morning at 3 a.m. I am I am leaving for the airport in Pittsburgh to fly to all day to Panama City, Panama for a mission trip for a week. But I'm going to try to continue the teachings along the way so that I don't miss any time with you. God bless and keep you. Please share the teachings by hitting that share button so your friends and their friends can see the teachings and hopefully some will choose to study along with this. God bless you. Be strong in the Lord. Don't be distracted by the lies of the devil as he distorts the gospel of Jesus Christ. God bless.